Well, enough of you have sat there and submitted your questions via Twitter. It's time for me to do another Q&A episode here on OTRS Central. If you want your questions, both wrestling and non-wrestling related, to be answered, just tweet your questions to add to OTRS Central on Twitter. All right, let's get started. Legendary AP asks, with Neville not losing clean to Cena, will he be the one to win the title after payback? <laughs> now, if it happened, you can come back and mock me and make fun of me and say, ha, 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 I told you so. But do you really think John Cena is going to put over Neville? I'm just saying. I don't know who the fuck will beat Cena at this point. <laughs> I don't know if anybody can. Diclonius Gabes, does WWE have no clue what to do with Sandow and Macho Mandow is just a knee-jerk reaction? That's pretty much what it is. They're like, well, he did such a good job imitating one individual. Why not have him imitate somebody else? That's the big fucking master plan. What else would you expect out of this stupid fucking company? They call me YDG. Thoughts on the ESPN WWE NXT 60 special? Didn't watch it yet. I probably will at some point, but I'm not in any particular hurry to do so. Um, when I do, I'll let you know my thoughts, but I have none at this moment. Uh, Ethan Donius, could you share what your favorite retail store or restaurant is? Uh, favorite retail store? I don't know if I have a favorite retail store. Um, in terms of a favorite restaurant... Again, I don't know that I have a particular favorite restaurant either, to be honest with you. And he also asked, do you see the extinction of the traditional shopping mall with the bad economy, economy easy for me to say, and e-commerce being so dominant? Uh, I don't know if I see the total extinction. I think the um, old concept of a mall has been a very endangered dinosaur concept for a long period of time. Take it from somebody who ran a retail store for years in a mall environment. When you see the rents that are charged for these stores uh, to set up locations in these malls, it can become very cost prohibitive. It can become very prohibitive to potentially making a profit. It's not saying it can't happen, but I mean, I've seen, like, I'll, well, let's put it this way. I remember back, this is a little over a decade ago, but Woodfield Mall, Schaumburg. I know we had the Foot Locker store there, did about $2 million a year, give or take a little bit. Maybe a year we'd do one seven five. next year we'd do $2.2, $2.25. But they're paying $30,000 a month in rent. That's $360,000 for the year. You know, that's not factoring in costs of, that are also associated with the business. You're talking about utilities. You're talking about your payroll for your employees. You're talking about the cost of goods. You're talking about this. You're talking about that. It's a store that I don't think ever has made a profit and never will make a profit. It won't even come close to it. And a lot of times, these bigger stores that you look at in these big malls, you assume probably that they make huge profits. A lot of times, they operate as a, at a loss. And a big loss at that is just the concept of having that store for that company in that particular mall because of whatever prestige or bullshit that comes along with it. I mean, I can remember seeing that uh, balance sheet for the Woodfield store, and they were losing a hundred to two hundred thousand a year, a hundred to two hundred thousand per year, and a lot of that was attributed to the outrageous rent that they were paying. Of course. As any corporation, instead of blaming it on that, they would sit there and try to pinch the hours for employees whenever possible, even though in no way, shape, or form was that going to have any real impact on the overall bottom line. It just wasn't. You're paying $360,000 a year in fucking rent, almost 20% of your gross revenue. That's foolish. And that's a recipe for a nonprofit disaster. Uh, Chairman 015, should the Elimination Chamber be brought back at the Survivor Series instead of a throwaway show like Payback? Well, it's not being brought back at a throwaway show. It's being put on its own independent throwaway show. Personally, I like the Elimination Chamber concept at Survivor Series. I think it fits in very nicely, but it's probably not going to happen. AJC7J, do you watch the Solomonster sound off? I thought he did podcasts, so pretty much would mean that you would listen to him. Uh, no, but that's that's no slight against him. I just don't listen to anybody else's podcast. Mm. 
care enough at this point in time about the business or anybody doing anything to uh, listen to any of their podcasts or pretty much watch anybody else's videos, if I'm being so frank. You know, good people do good things. Solid Monster is most certainly one of them. If you're looking for a good wrestling podcast, I would definitely recommend checking his out above many others. Um, but no, I personally do not. Luke Wynn Stanley, will you ever shave the crust ash or is that becoming a permanent gimmick? Um, I don't know if it's becoming a permanent gimmick. I mean, it was an attempt to try and grow a real big boy mustache. As you can see, it's kind of epically failed. I mean, it's kind of developed into its own form of Hitler mustache. Uh, what will probably happen is one day I'll just get sick and tired of fucking looking at it, and I'll shave that just like I'll end up shaving my head really soon, probably sooner than you would anticipate. Um, Weston, Texas. Uh, Cam Newton or Russell Wilson, who's better? Uh, I probably would go with Cam from a from a physical standpoint. Um, you know, Wilson does his thing too, and that's fine. But Wilson gets a lot more help around him than Cam Newton does. Uh, is Floyd Mayweather overrated, and will boxing die? Uh. Overrated in what sense? Floyd Mayweather is good for Floyd Mayweather, and that is it. He is not good for boxing. He is horrible for boxing and has been for a long period of time. When people talk about him being one of the all-time greats, you know, the guy's never lost. You could talk about his style of fighting and the defensive way he fights, and, you know, the fact is undefeated is undefeated. Um, you know... He would certainly probably go into that category, but maybe more in the top 20 fighters of all time than as opposed to the top 10. Uh, will boxing die? I mean, does boxing really have that much interest to begin with? Does anybody really give a shit about it anyways? I mean, so Demon Studios. Why does Vince keep saying it's sports entertainment while all they show is wrestling and no other sports? You know, here I'm going to piggyback off of your question because I think this is interesting. For somebody who runs from the phrase professional wrestling and hates the phrase professional wrestling he sure likes now with raw every week to book a boring ass professional wrestling show there is no sports entertainment there is no entertainment really it's just a boring ass crappy overproduced watered down wrestling show you would think for a guy that runs so much from professional wrestling and the word and everything comes with it and is all about sports entertainment that he would actually do more sports entertainment than actual professional wrestling. But shit, you watch Raw every week, most of the entire three hours is just professional wrestling. And it's shit. It's not sports entertainment, that's for goddamn sure. That's part of the problem with the WWE. There is no identity. Who the fuck are they? What the fuck are they trying to do? Doc was here. What's your thoughts on a WrestleMania marathon? Yes, you read that right. 1 to 31, nonstop viewing. Should it be done? For your sanity, for your body odor, for your bowels, for your bladder, for everything involved, the answer is no. Don't do it. I don't know what you hope to accomplish with it. I mean, what, what is that? Five days, four or five days of consecutive viewing of WrestleMania? Ugh, I couldn't do that. Nadim Abulal, do you think it's too late for Wade Barrett to be a main eventer, and do you think he'll ever be or should be one? He should have been one. He should have long since been established as one, but part of the problem is every time you get behind Wade Barrett and give him any type of push, then he's out with an injury for three, six months or longer. Um, is it too late for Wade Barrett to become a main eventer? In theory, no. In today's WWE, is it too late for Wade Bear to become a main eventer? Absolutely, yes. Michael Corvin, should the Mega Powers have gotten a run with the tag titles? I mean, it would have been cool. You know, then the question would have been, who did they drop the titles to, and how does the drop happen? Because Hogan wasn't putting anybody over at that point in time. I mean, the Mega Powers were their own cool thing. I don't know if you needed to throw the belts in there. It wouldn't have hurt if you threw the belts in there, but you didn't have to throw the belts in there either. Um, and then he also asked, do fans who claim to hate when someone is shoved down their throats not mind it so much when it's someone they're like? Well, sure. Yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of somebody and you like a particular wrestler or performer or things about him, 
you're probably not going to mind so much if he's shoved down your throat. You know, so is it necessarily hypocritical? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, if somebody doesn't like Roman Reigns but loves Seth Rollins, will they like Seth Rollins' force more than they will Roman Reigns' force? Yeah, absolutely. Will they overlook certain things about Seth Rollins' force and over-maximize some of the things about Roman Reigns' force? Yeah, absolutely. It's just nature of the beast, I guess. Philip Covey, what do you think of Lucha Underground? Personally, I love it, and it's not because of the kicks and flips. Personally, I don't watch it. I never have. I don't know if I ever will. So I have no opinion on it. As far as I'm concerned right now, pretty much the entire wrestling business, especially here in the United States, is shit. It all sucks. If you think your company's good, you're wrong. It fucking sucks. I mean, it's just, just bad. Everybody involved with the wrestling business today should be goddamn ashamed of themselves. They can't get shit right. Period. And Mr. Tuxedo closes us out by asking, what are your thoughts on the incident at the Muhammad Drawing Exhibit in Texas? Oh, boy. All right. So, with what happened uh, with that, what was it, Jess Sweet or whatever, or Charlie, whatever the fuck it was, Jess Sweet, Charlie, whatever the hell that was over there, what was it in France or Denmark, I don't, I don't really fucking care. But the whole thing about drawing pictures of the in cartoons and caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad, knowing that's something that goes against the Islamic religion, knowing that's somebody that, something that could possibly offend a lot of Muslims, of which there are, are over a billion in this world, I think it might even be close to two billion, it would be similar to drawing non-flattering, potentially offensive pictures of Jesus Christ or Mary Magdalene. And expecting Christians to not get all butthurt and upset about that themselves. So when you sit there and do this type of Muhammad drawing exhibit in Texas, you shouldn't be all that particularly surprised if some religious whack job, regardless of the religion, decides they might want to take a shot at you because you fucking pissed them off. Don't play with fire and then be surprised when you freaking get burned. Don't sit there and do this type of shit to call this type of ignoramus attention to yourself and then be surprised when your chickens come home to roost. Well, it's terrible that people get shot over shit like this. But it happens. And if you partook in this and expected anything other than this to potentially happen, you are a fucking moron. And I hate to say that maybe you deserve what the fuck you got, but what the hell else did you expect was potentially going to happen? It's horrible, and it's tragic, and it's sad. But also, let's not make this a condemnation of Islam or of Muslims, because how many crazy sh fucking things have we seen Christians do over the years in the name of defending Christianity? You're going to do a Muhammad drawing exhibit. These people knew exactly what the fuck they were doing. They knew what they were setting out to do. Period. So again, they shouldn't be surprised that somebody was upset with them or somebody might get pissed off enough to where they might want to take a shot at him. That's simple. You know, you could sit there and do different things. You could sit there and say whatever you want, but you also have to understand that those things could potentially bring you some consequences. It, it's just stupid. And it figures it would happen in a place like Texas. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. It's just plain stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Are there not more productive things for people to do with their time in fucking Texas than do Muhammad drawing exhibits? I mean, seriously. Think about it. All right, so thanks to you guys that submitted your questions for this q and I'll be back again sometime next week with another Q&A. Make sure you check out the other videos here on OTR Essential. All righty, later. Bye.